Hey, Flathead, Flathead Terry here. Hey, I'm not in Flathead Terry's garage. I'm in Flathead Terry's basement today. I took the seats out of my 1968 Camaro convertible, and I'm gonna show you today how to put some new skins on, get some new foam inside, rebuild them so they're just like new. Follow along, I'll show you everything you need to know to get the job done yourself. Okay, before we get started with disassembly, I wanted to show you some of the tools you'll need. First of all, you'll need some hog ring pliers, some hog rings there, uh, some hand tools to remove some of the existing original hog rings. Uh, also, you can see we're here where I got some new foam for the seat, bottom and top, some batting and some burlap that I got from a local store. And then of course, I also ordered new skins over here that you'll see me install. So there we go. Okay, some advice from Flathead Terry before we begin. First of all, wear safety glasses when cutting those old hog rings off. They have a tendency to fly all over the place. Number two, wear a mask when removing the old upholstery. Uh, you never know what mold is in there or any other nasties floating around, so you gotta protect yourself. Number three, keep the old upholstery for future reference. You never know when you'll need it to go back and maybe find a location of something on the originals. Number four, do one scene at a time from start to finish. That way you can keep track of all of the parts. Next I wanted to show you the condition of the seat. It doesn't look too bad from a distance, but there's a, some rips here. These are original seats. Uh, they're plus 50 years old and uh, they're brittle. They're very hard. The foam is really gone and then the aroma is uh, less than desirable. So let's get started with disassembly. Okay, to separate the top from the bottom, first you have to do is take off the side panel here, which I've already loosened up. It's got a little uh, connector here that will hold it on. And then down below here, there's a C-clip and a couple of washers. So note the locations of where everything is located. I'll do this to the other side as well. <laughs> Okay, now that I have the back off, I can flip this over carefully and then show you the underneath here. And there's a couple of things I wanna show you. Okay, with this being original seats, I wanted to show you the original spring configuration, how they're connected along over here. And then also you have the original retainer spring for the seat adjustment. Uh, what I'll have to do is, first of all, you take off, there's some bolts back here, right here, and back in here, and here, and here, is to take these rails off with a half inch uh, wrench. And what I'll also do is this side sticks. There's a bunch of oil and grease down here. Uh, it doesn't move very well at all. So I'll degrease that and re-lubricate it. So first of all, let's uh, get those removed. Okay, now before I start taking the cover off, I wanted to locate uh, the locations of some of the hog rings from the factory. Of course, there's some here. And let me just keep looking through here, how it gets all tucked in around here, all the way around this edge, then around this way too. Okay, there's a hog ring right here. And then this gets tucked in. And now you can see through here. Let me zoom out a little bit. Here you go. You can kind of see now where some of this is ripped up. Um, but you can see where it's tied to this edge here, this wire down here. Okay, so uh, let me cut those and get them off. Then next I'm going to pull the sides off here and go from there. Okay, I was able to disconnect the rod that went through this section here. So I'm gonna have to pull this thing through and uh, I'll clean that up a little bit and reuse it again on the new piece. Okay, so now this is pulled back. Uh, now I can start taking out the rest. Okay, what I've discovered too is taking these edges off. Of course, there's a plastic or retainer 
back here underneath that's sewn in here that tucks in underneath here. These have been on for over 50 years and uh, they're coming off very difficult. So I'm going to have to really work hard to, to get this plastic off and start pulling that cover back. Okay, let me continue. A couple of things I need to do. Remove the bracket back here and remove the stopper back there. Okay, now that I was able to remove the two brackets there, now I wanted to show you this. Here's a nice date code of when the vinyl was produced, but let me peel this back a little bit here and try to get in here. You can see what's holding it in down there are the hog rings. Let's see if I can get in there. Well, you can kind of see them down there. So I need to cut those uh, out, but note where the new ones go because they're going to go in that same location. There we are. So there's the old one. You can see where the bead here is all the way around. Okay, right through here, you can see the bead. There we go, better camera angle there. Okay, way in the back here are three more. Okay, I'm gonna remove this. Boy, look at how dirty that is, all that mold. Yeah, I'm gonna go put a mask on. Okay, I put a mask on. That will help protect me from all of this. So, I'm gonna try to get all of this foam off. I have to flip it over. Yeah, in fact, I will. Okay. Okay, there it is. All right, now they have this batting on here and then below that is the burlap. Whew, that was a lot of work, but we got it done. Um, some good news here. Um, this particular wire, paper coated wire, all the way around here is in great shape. That's where the seat cover will attach. Um, as we put it in the channel all the way around, we hog ring it to this. So this is in good shape. Uh, so now the challenge to get it cleaned up and uh, get it ready for reinstallation. Okay, now on to disassembly of the rear portion of the seat. I can see all kinds of uh, little vermin that were in there running around and uh, putting in some of their uh, seeds and stuff. So anyway, what I'll do here is cut these out and uh, get the uh, cover off. All right, a couple of things I got to do. Okay, I started taking out some of the hog rings along here. Of course, this panel here kind of showing basically which holes or slots they go into along here. Uh, same with this. We have the bead here and then how that attaches along oop, along this rail here. You can see where a remnant is. So uh, just good reference. So when I put it back together, I know where they go. Okay, I've removed all of the hog rings all the way around. Now I'm going to try to pull off the uh, vinyl cover. Easier said than done. Mm -hmm. 
flip it over and we'll see how much debris comes out. Quite a bit, I bet. Now it's still attached, of course, inside this seam here. It's still attached. But it's virtually impossible to get into the, the rings inside here to release it. So you got to go from this top side to get to it. Okay, so let's just go in here and get them disconnected. All right, there we go. Some date codes down there. Don't know what they mean. But up here, same thing. 11 of 1967. Oop, can you see that? Where is it? Right here. Yeah, 11 of 1967. Right there. So, there we go. Okay, air foam. And then some number, number part numbers down here. Um, what I find interesting too is that they do put a, a uh, batting on top of the foam. Um, I watched some other videos and I've seen some other manufacturers. Um, they don't do that. So that's very interesting. So now to pull all of that up. Okay, there we go. Okay, something I wanted to show you after I removed all of the hog rings here. I thought this was very interesting. Of course, they have the um, batting here and here. And then as you pull it back here, they actually have these little wires in here. Little wires all the way through. So they took the time to weave these wires in to help keep this um, burlap together and uniform uh, throughout the whole procedure. So, very interesting. So, I'm going to continue to remove this and get it down to the bare frame. Okay, was able to get all of the rings out. Here it is. Like they painstakingly wove those little rods all the way through. So, very interesting. I'll hold on to that. Okay, the frame looks in good shape now that I've removed all of the fabric. Uh, here's the, uh, you know, paper covered listing wire, they call it, all the way around. Uh, that's in really good shape, all the way around. Excellent. So, uh, again, um, you know, the frame has just got some minor rust to it. Uh, I don't know if I'm even going to coat it at all. Uh, the basic thing I'm going to do now is just get it all cleaned up and, uh, see where it stands as far as uh, cleanliness goes. Okay, here I flipped it over, take a look at it. And as you can see, the foam is still stuck on there. Uh, that's not a good thing. It looks like they used some sort of adhesive 50 years ago. So next, clean all of this up, uh, get it ready for reassembly. Okay, I was able to remove all of the loose rust, uh, clean it up the best I could. Uh, then I coated it with this rust reformer. This converts the rust to a paintable surface. Uh, that way I could get into all of the different areas of the frame itself. So now it's protected for the future. Okay, now next step is to uh, apply adhesive to these areas here, which I noted earlier that had that very thin matting material around them. So uh, what I'm going to do now is spray uh, the adhesive along in here. Then I'm going to use some of this foam material. It's very thin but protective and apply that to these areas here. Uh, I'll cut it out so it fits properly uh, and it helps protect along these rough edges uh, like they did from the factory all the way through here. So let's do that. Okay I was able to apply adhesive, spray adhesive and put some of the uh, thin foam along here to protect that edge. So that is completed. 
goes from here all the way around underneath and over there so we're all covered okay as you can see I trimmed out a piece of Okay, now that I have both layers of burlap uh, secured, now I'm going to put the thin layer of the batting material. Okay, what I did here was mark where the paper coated listing wire is all the way around. Uh, so when I put down the batting all the way around and then the inside, I know to avoid this area. Okay, I've cut and secured the foam all around the edges. This I have uh, used some spray adhesive to hold that down. Uh, next, what goes over this is the uh, foam pad uh, that will go over it. So uh, let me get that in place and I'll show you. Okay, so far I've installed a hug ring in here, lined it up with the dots or the lines I made here. I also installed one here and it connected to the listing wire underneath. So now I'm going to locate the other one over here. Make sure I'm pushing in with my finger from the bottom to make sure that I have it lined up, which it is. Now to be able to get it in here, you're going to have to push down really hard to get it all the way down to that ring or down to the listing wire and then compress. And there we go. So now it won't come up. So one, two, three. So now I also have this here to install on the th three different loops back here. I'll show you that. Okay, here's what I was just talking about. This gets pulled down and there's some loops right down in here. Two and three. I already marked the center of this. So it lines up with the center of the loop down here. So I'll get that done. Carefully. Okay, now all three of those are installed. Now what we have to do is carefully flip it upside down and secure the perimeter out in front here. Yeah, so next is I'm going to hog ring all the way around this edge to the frame itself and tuck this in all the way through. Okay, I've secured the underside here all the way around. It's all secure now. So now it's time for the cover. Okay, here's the cover right here. Uh, what I ended up doing is taking a measurement from the middle here, which actually is the center line right in here, and marking it, and then also marking the center line for the foam itself. So when I flip this over, I'm going to hog ring and line up these holes here and make sure I secure it all the way around so these have to slide all the way in so I'm going to have to secure of course this bead through this and into the paper covered listing wire so we will uh, work on that okay I was successful in putting in the first three hog rings in the front here. Be prepared to put some effort in. When you put that hog ring in your tool here, you got to put some tension on it this way, of course, grip it, and you're going to have to push down with a lot of force to get through all three layers from here, through the foam, and around the uh, paper coated listing wire. So, and then you're going to have to squeeze real tight to make sure it's tight and snug. So, uh, I also put my finger underneath to try to feel around to make sure that um, the points of this, I'll go and point my, poke my finger a little bit, I don't care, uh, to make sure I was aligned correctly. So, so far so good. I'll keep muscling in the rest of them. Okay, I have successfully put in all the hog rings all the way around, connected them to the paper coated listing wire all the way through. We're all snug. So now the next thing is, is to pry this part of the cover on first. I take that back. Uh, yes, this has to be partially connected underneath, and then we go to the back. So that's what we're going to do. 
Okay, now the task of folding this over. Okay, I got most of the wrinkles out. You still have some more work to do because I still have to pull all of the bottom out and in around. So I have more stretching to do. So let me continue that. Okay, now let's put this in around here, push down, slide it around. Okay, I've already connected all of the plastic around there. All of that trim has all been installed. Now onto the back portion here that has to be tucked in. Uh, there's a couple of ears they give you here too. So those should be done first. Pulled and stretched as far as you can to get those connected first. Then you can come over with this flap here. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, I've already connected all of the plastic around there. All of that trim has all been installed. Now onto the back portion here that has to be tucked in. Uh, there's a couple of ears they give you here too. So those should be done first. Pulled and stretched as far as you can to get those connected first. Then you can come over with this flap here. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, I've secured both of these along here. Pulled it tight. Now we have to stretch all of this. I also have the rod from the original seat that I was able to paint and now reuse. Get that in there. Okay, so now what has to happen is this has to reach this point here. So a lot of stretching, a lot of pulling is going to happen now. Okay, I was able to get that first one in. Now I'm just going to add a few more here. There we are. Nice and tight through there, right back to its original location. What I could also do is let me just add another one in here. Okay, now I have it completed. All of the back side here is all tucked in and secured all the way through. Let's take a look. The front, the top. There we go. We're all set, ready to go. Good stuff. Now, the other thing we have to do next is carefully open up these guys right here. So I'll show you how to do that. Okay, now we need to cut out this hole right here. Uh, this is the pin that the rear or the back of the seat connects to. So what I do is I get my grandfather's antique tool here, my upholstery hammer. Okay. Then I'll just carefully cut out that little extra tab right over here. So there we go. Okay, now on to the back side of the seat. Uh, what I've done so far, I've painted the frame with the rust converter. And then also you can see here, I've already cut the burlap and secured it temporarily. Uh, so now on to 
the batting that I'll cut to uh, place uh, over it. So that's next. Okay, I was able to salvage the batting from the back of the seat, and I did find some of the same size batting right here. So found that at Joanne Fabric. So what I'll do is use this as a pattern and cut out the fresh one. Okay, as you can see, I used the template from the old uh, batting and uh, was able to cut one out of the new material. I also marked on the burlap uh, where the listing wire is located. So as I place this and uh, secure it down, I know approximately where it's located. Okay, I was able to secure the batting down to the seat frame itself. Uh, I used some spray adhesive as well throughout here and along the edges to help hold it in place uh, until the foam is installed. Okay, next is the foam. Here is the foam. I want to show you the back of it right here. Uh, here's some of the material that's attached to it that we'll use to stretch it over the frame and uh, secure it. Also, I wanted to show you, I've already marked the center of it right here. So when I put the seat cover over it, I'll be able to center it properly. So next is to get this in place. Okay, I think I have it in the right location. I was able to feel around to the edges here inside to make sure that it lined up with the listing wire. So what I'm going to do now is set one in the front up there to make sure it's aligned properly. Then I'll flip it over and start doing some of the more uh, installation and attaching these to the frame. Stretch it in there. Okay, now that I was able to secure the foam pad to the listing wire, I'm going to now start stretching the foam pad all the way around and tuck it in using the same locations as before. All right. Good to okay, so now for the cover, uh, you want to make sure you got the right one with the hole for your latch to release the seat back. So, of course, this is the passenger side, so this will flip around and go around that lever over here. So, make sure you have the right one. Number two is I mark the center again of this particular uh, cover and that is going to line up with the mark I have on the foam. So that will at least help me start with the alignment properly. So uh, let's get that started. Okay, the alignment is perfect. So now I start working my way around. That's where you need a lot of muscle. Okay, I've attached all of the hog rings throughout the center portion here. Now on to the wrestling match. Get this thing stretched and pulled over. All right, let's see if we can get this thing on here.
Okay, I've completed the installation of all the hog rings all the way around the perimeter. I wanted to give you a closer shot of that and how I did it around the corners, right through here and over here, similar to how they did it from the factory. Uh, a couple of things to note, I wanted to show you this also. Uh, when I had to stretch this piece in here, uh, initially it was very difficult. This thing only stretched to about here. Uh, so what I did is I added a ring and then I connected this ring to that ring to kind of extend it. So I got it to about here. Then I continued to pull and stretch until these rings were able to connect all the way up. No problem. So uh, that worked out really well. All right. And then also here's how it turned out on the other side. Turned out great. There's a lot of manipulation there. A lot of massaging, pulling, stretching, try to get that material in place. But it will happen if you keep working it. Turned out real good. So now I have to install the stopper uh, that I have here. Of course, that has to go in. Uh, let's see a couple other items on here as well to recover. And I think we're done. Okay, what I wanted to show you too was uh, when the rear cover goes on, there's the two holes here that secure it. Uh, of course, you don't have them here, but what works nice is if you use a awl like this, uh, you can reach inside and get to the holes and poke through here and over here so you can align them perfectly. Okay, it was also able to locate the hole for the adjustment stopper down here. All right, got a nice little flange on here for the entry in so you can line it up. Okay, now time to install the rear cover. Okay, now that I've installed all the hardware down there and the lever, let's flip it over. There we go. It's real nice all the way through. So now let's attach it to the bottom piece. All right, here's the completed seat all reassembled. I just want to show you how it turned out once it's all back together. Uh, the quality of the materials are just excellent. Really impressed with all the seams, the fit up. Uh, all of that is just wonderful. Uh, give it a few weeks to really smooth out and stretch itself out, but uh, overall, I'm very satisfied with how it turned out all the way through. Looks like new.